Suzanne Bruce. I've been working in the electric bike field for uh, 20 years as a journalist, as a photographer and as a communicator basically. And five years ago I founded Pedelec Adventures to raise awareness about how much fun electric bikes can actually be. I'm Andreas Terpsch. Uh, I work in the electric bicycle industry since oh, eight, nine years probably now. My part uh, um, in this tour is planning the route, the little sections in Berlin from campsite to campsite, the uh, roads, if it's possible to go there, if it's paved or not, um, the distances, yeah, that is one part. Uh, the other part is bicycle maintenance and checking the bikes, uh, if something is broken, setting up the campsite. Hello, I'm Michael Burger. My profession is uh, industrial design and I'm more or less uh, specialized in electric mobility. My role at this trip is riding bicycle part-time and also driving the support car and big role is taking pictures. So my name is uh, Nora Mantai and I'm a journalist. I do write a lot about electric mobility of all kinds, so four wheels, two wheels, no wheels. However, my heart uh, beats for two wheel mobility, so it's pedelecs. For the Center Snow Tour, I support with media and also social media. So while these guys are moving further into the wilderness, I will be the backup support in the office. There's one moment that everything starts and I slept for like 30 minutes. We've got everything that we need, I hope. Probably much more than we need. I'm sure there will be a couple of challenges when we get there. Our partner in San Francisco who runs an e-bike shop will pick us up. So that's going to be an easy start, I hope. This is our base camp here. We are in Redwood City. Joe Witherspoon from Motostrano was so kind to let us use his shop as his base camp. Motostrano has been in business since 2002. Uh, we started primarily as a motorcycle accessories uh, place. Uh, for me, coming uh, from the motorized uh, world or from motorcycle accessories, um, the e-bike e uh, industry and the, the products coming out of it seemed to me to be a, a great kind of progressive thing. Uh, away from uh, the combustion engine uh, down into something that's uh, more eco-friendly on one hand but also human-friendly uh, in terms of health benefits and, and things like that. I try to mount these racks on the front wheel so we can have bags in the front and in the back. Then we have these uh, bags on a handlebar Lights, of course, we need. We need mountings for displays, for GoPro cameras, water, of course. We need fenders, mud guards, lights in the back. And yeah, of course, kickstand so the bike won't fall. To fit everything we have as good as possible in the van, that we can reach everything. And we've been doing shopping for, for days, um, but there's always something that's missing, basically. We've got all the keep cups now to keep our drinks warm and cold, sugar, milk we need, yogurt, eggs, uh, healthy breakfast for the cyclists. Yeah, so I think we're gonna go one more time to our shop before we go to Monterey. Thank you. Other classic in Monterey, in California, which is the biggest bike festival in North America. It's a great atmosphere, lots of races going on. 
and the new market in the US evolving and um, actually we can repeat what we've done in Europe promoting electric bikes as something that can be a big benefit to anyone for their personal life. We're gonna start the tour with an official kickoff press event at the high bike booth. So we are starting the tour now. We will head north first to San Francisco. At the beginning, we were on the mountain bike trail, which was really, really narrow. But then after a while, we had a beautiful bike path and it went through woods with small trees and they were hanging down like this. And we passed like huge fields of strawberries. I don't think I've ever seen fields that big. And of course we had to try one. They were nice and sweet. Well, towards the evening, we arrived um, at a place called Santa Cruz Monterey Bay. Um, this is about 60 kilometers north of Monterey where we started. And the campsite is not far away from the beach. So now we're here at this beautiful beach in the Monterey Bay. And it feels so good to have the sand in your hands. Sand to snow. This is, this is a great start for our adventure. I love cycling, I love to be out in the nature and we have been to several countries, also continents with e-bike adventure trips and right now is a very exciting time in the US because in Europe the market has quite settled and quite established itself and in the US the electric bike market is just starting and I wanted to be part of this, I wanted to continue promoting electric mobility, what I've done in Europe for the last 20 years and now do it in the US. With High Bike being a pioneer in electric mountain biking and also being a pioneer in pushing the US e-bike market, we found the perfect partner for this. having cycled a couple of days through the nature and the countryside, arriving in San Francisco was an awesome moment. The different faces of the city and also the atmosphere is open-minded and, and friendly. San Francisco is part of the Green Lane program, so the city does quite a bit um, for cyclists. You see bike lanes almost everywhere in pretty good shape and you see cycling infrastructure like places to leave and lock your bike. The hills are incredibly steep. On those hills, you would want to have a motor to help you get uphill and arrive on top of the hill, not completely exhausted. So we enjoyed it a lot and we believe that San Francisco is the perfect city for electric bikes. While we were on the ride today, it was raining pretty hard and that was actually our chance to test 
how good the rain clothing and the Ortlieb equipment is. Luckily, we stayed dry and all our stuff stayed dry. What you see in the background is an event of the e-bike expo and the idea is to let consumers try electric bikes. It is very difficult to explain how an electric bike or uh, to be precise a pedelec actually feels so the best way to experience it is always a test ride. Whenever someone steps on an electric bike and goes for a ride and come back they always have a huge smile in their faces. And even though at the beginning they might be a bit skeptical, um, but the effect is always the same. Now that we have left Silicon Valley, the actual adventure begins. Now, no more hotels. In many places, no more internet. Uh, in some places, no more electricity. That's a challenge. We will use offline maps that we have tested. And if offline maps don't, don't work out for us, we are prepared with uh, maps and compass. Well, electricity and charging the batteries um, is going to be a challenge because it will require uh, planning ahead, which means uh, maybe not riding in the highest modes, but switch down to standard or economy mode in order to save some battery power. Well, of course, we hope to see a lot of wildlife, birds, deer, and I really wish to see a bear. Fuck! It's raining! <laughs> it never rains in California. It never rains in California. camping underneath a big tree and last night it was so crazy windy the branches fell down onto the ground and hit our tent so I thought to be on the safe side I'll better wear my helmet so last night we arrived at this place called Turtle Beach and um, I am excited to start off today and get even closer towards Yosemite We climbed up into the mountains of the Sierra Nevada, entered the Yosemite National Park, which was one of our milestones, and then had an awesome downhill ride into Yosemite Valley with fascinating scenery. Waterfalls, we went through tunnels, and our bikes, although they were fully packed, just rolled along the road and it was so easy, it was so enjoyable. In the morning we already saw the first uh, wildlife. There was deer right there at the campsite in between hundreds of people 
and they were like totally chilled and didn't didn't mind. We left the bikes there because the trails are closed for bikes. So we went on to a hike towards Half Dome, which is one of the most iconic mountains in Yosemite Valley. When we reached the top, here we saw it. There was snow and we were like, we have made it from sand to snow. Here we are. Woo! Awesome. So we really <laughs> celebrated that and had a lot of fun there. <laughs> awesome. We haven't seen a real bear yet. Yeah, we're hoping we're still hoping to see one. And then we found that Tayoga Pass is closed which meant that we could not take the road that would take us directly to Mono Lake. Uh, Mono Lake is on the eastern side of Yosemite uh, National Park. And then we were hoping that the next road, which would be a, a little detour over the north, would be open. But um, we were told it, it wasn't. There was too much snow and the pass was closed as well. And so was the one after that. And the first road that they said is opened is number 88, which is a detour of about 300 miles, which means we will need um, four days alone to do that detour. Towards the dark, we arrived in the skiing area of Pinecrest, and uh, this is this is where I'm sitting now. And today, uh, we will continue finding our way along forest roads towards the north, and then head over to Mono Lake, which probably will take about three days from now. We wanted to shortcut uh, along forest roads towards highway number 88 in the north to avoid dozens of miles of detours along the main road. And um, the first 15 kilometers were paved roads and it was very nice to ride. And then the roads became really, really rocky and challenging to ride. And it, they stayed like that for about 60 kilometers. water was cold. What a day. We didn't expect that we would make it down to here to the campsite and we were kind of making plans of setting up the tent somewhere in the wilderness. 
every day we, we carry all the stuff that we would need to be to travel really independent. We were more than happy getting here and meeting the rest of the crew. Yeah, here we are and hungry. Like the, like the day before. Yeah, what happened? <laughs> we got stuck in the snow. We couldn't get it out until we found someone on the main road who was actually a highway patrol who pulled us out again. <laughs> it's quite tiring to push the bikes through there. It's about 50 kilos. Yeah, just catching the breath and then we'll ride on. We crossed the mountains um, on highway number 88 and climbed up to um, 8,800 something feet. the Pacific Crest and we're now at the other side of Sierra Nevada. Now I'm happy we're here and I'm quite tired and looking forward to a bed. Mono Lake is famous for its petrified springs, which are a result of carbon-rich water that mixes with the alkaline water of the lake itself.
into heavy rains a couple of times and the worst time was probably when we climbed up to uh, 7,000 feet again and then rode down into the Death Valley, into the driest area of California and it was pouring with rain and it was freezing cold. After the rain, Death Valley is, it's not dead, it's fully alive. I'm, I'm pretty stunned by the beauty of nature. In the desert, you have to plan your day a little bit different because it gets so hot, 40 degrees. The best thing to get through is to get up in the morning really early, like four o'clock, get everything ready, pack everything and then leave six o'clock or something. Share a coffee? Yeah, it's from Baris, <laughs> okay, <guys. Baris> the tour. <laughs> By 10 o'clock, it already gets so hot. There are signs everywhere in the Death Valley that you should drink one gallon of water. But when, you, when you're riding and when you're active, of course, you need a lot more. So by 11 or 12 at latest, you want to get to some point where you can stop for a few hours, take a nap, take a siesta, and then continue riding in the afternoon hours. A big part of our Death Valley experience was pretty bumpy gravel roads. It was a pretty cool experience to, to do that with, with the electric bikes because um, such surface is very energy consuming, like for the rider itself. And with all that luggage, I think on a regular bike, it would have been almost impossible. When we got off the bumpy roads and we felt like Ooh, like this and then went on the on the smooth pavement it was like whoo it was like heaven <laughs> Oh, this is good. 
slightly refreshing. We have reached the hottest and the lowest point of our journey. We are now in the Badwater Basin in the middle of the Death Valley. It is 282 feet below sea level. You can feel it in the air, it's different, it's so much hotter than from where we came a few feet higher up. Here um, in the hot areas in the US, there's a lot of animals that we don't know in Europe. Rattlesnakes, they're poisonous. Scorpions, they're poisonous. And black widows. So in the daytime, like we feel safe to wear flip-flops. And at nighttime, even though it's still, whew, it's still really hot, we kind of feel safer in like real shoes. They live underneath the stones. So for example, when we set up the tent in the evening and it, it, it's getting dark already, we were told to better wear gloves. We haven't seen uh, any of them so far. We have seen butterflies in Death Valley, can you imagine? We've seen rabbits and birds. Now our time in Death Valley has come to an end, although I could spend maybe weeks here. But today we're heading to Vegas, which again will be a completely different scenery. Vegas, which is such a contrast. Boom! Here you are in a completely different world. It's it's a party town. That's what we're gonna do tonight. From Vegas to Zion. This is where we are now and this is what you see in, in the background. It's great to be back in the nature. Most of this is new to me and um, new to the crew as well. I'm at Atreus Landing. 
the coolest place on earth. Zion is the first destination on the Colorado Plateau. Of this part of the route, I expect lots of canyons, lots of wild scenery. Die wer? Die Dünen. Cycling makes you happy. In the middle of this kind of canyon countryside, all of a sudden there's this orange sand dunes here. The sand is amazingly fine and it goes everywhere. And the great thing about the e-bikes is you might not be able to ride through deep sand, but you're riding without a noise in the most beautiful nature. Each rider is equipped with uh, three batteries uh, on, a, on a normal day and each battery has uh, 400 watt hours and gets us about 50 to 60 kilometers. Once a battery is empty, it can be charged to 80% within an hour and to charge, recharge the battery fully takes about two and a half hours. And of course the range that each battery gives us depends a lot on the riding surface. A lot of times we are riding on paved roads, but also on gravel roads and uh, dirt roads. We are actually very pleased with the performance of the Yamaha system and the Yamaha batteries because they are very resistant to temperature differences like uh, cold and extreme heat which normally uh, has a big impact on the performance of the batteries. trying to adjust the uh, gear shifting on the bike because it's not working properly anymore. It's really bent. On this tour it turned out that it's quite helpful to have a quite quite a bit of variation with the gears. This bike has now 2,400, 2,500 kilometers already uh, through snow and sand, like here in wind. For this, it's actually quite, yeah, stable. I mean, uh, it has to carry a lot of weight, and uh, I'm, I'm quite surprised how robust the bikes are actually. We're at the North Rim and uh, in the far background you can see the South Rim that is a bit lower. You approach the Grand Canyon and you know it's coming but you can't see anything except for the road and woods and, and forest and you only see it once you're there. All of a sudden you see this 
6,000 feet deep canyon with the Colorado River that flows on the bottom of it. Riding down here, the Colorado Plateau presented itself with the strongest headwind that we have had um, on our trip so far. It was really, really hard pedaling against the wind. It kept blowing like dust and sand into our eyes and ears and nose everywhere. We were actually very high in elevation. It turned out that approaching the Grand Canyon at the highest elevation of our trip so far, we were at 9,150 feet. And um, while cycling, you can, you can feel that the air is getting thinner and that it gets hard, harder to breathe and that everything uh, becomes more, more strenuous. Even though after six weeks of constant cycling, I think we're pretty well trained by now. I feel the thin air a little bit, but it's okay. As long as the battery is charged. I love this country! Our ride to Jacob Lake was so quick. With tailwind, it kind of blew us up the hill and we could ride at an average speed of 34 kilometers per hour. Our bike stopped assisting at 32 kilometers per hour. So thanks to that, we could save a lot of battery. And that day I got over 90 kilometers out of one 400 watt hour battery, which is, which is quite a lot. Nice, nice. Was it today? Let's go, guys. Let's go find food. Food, mangiare. <laughs> spaghetti. Oh, spaghetti. Haben wir Tomatensauce? Ja, ich glaube schon. Boah, da hätte ich ja Bock drauf heute. Oh, das schmeckt bedeutend. We're on our way towards Bryce Canyon now. We originally planned a three-day ride from the Grand Canyon to the Bryce Canyon, but now that we think we might be able to do it in two days even, um, which would give us an extra day in, in Bryce Canyon. That'd be great. Wow, jetzt kommt die geilste Abfahrt ever. We didn't want to take a main road, so we shortcut it over unpaved roads, dirt roads. Part of it was pretty difficult to ride because there was deep sand. We, we got stuck from now and then and had to push the bikes through the sand. As soon as you enter the park, there's a cycle lane, perfectly paved cycle lane. It kind of does this ch -ch -ch and it's so much fun to ride. We had the most beautiful evening light over the amphitheater. It's, yeah, I don't have words. So many people like ask us about what we're doing. Oh, are these electric bikes? And get excited about it. And then they ask for, for the brand and ah, oh, German brand, hmm, very interesting. I've seen them around and I have other, seen other bikes, other electric brands around. Seems like um, every, everybody gets excited about electric bikes on the one hand and what we're doing with them on the other hand. The reaction that we get from people, I would say, is a hundred percent cool. Ich habe ihm keine Käsewürfel gegeben. Oh oh. This is not looking very good. It's gonna be. 
cold and raining again. It was a more busy road. We couldn't cycle next to each other. And as we were three people, it's nice to change the front position because the front person is always riding in the wind and you can save a lot of energy. And on the other hand, you cycle the same speed and the group keeps yeah, together. And if somebody has a, yeah, is far away, maybe it's a puncture or something, and you don't know what's happening. Andy was was waiting beside the road, and then a few meters further up the road, the first tire was going like poof, and then the second one poof. <laughs> so we stopped and repaired it, exchanged the tubes. I had this kind of moment when I thought I need to pull out the map and, and take a look at it. Although it was pretty clear where we were going to go. The plan was to go from Escalante to Page. Page is known for the Antelope Canyon. And we were told that it's going to rain and that this road can be very muddy. So then we thought, oh, why don't we, why don't we take the Burr Trail? We have seen pictures of it, which were just stunning. And like people, people around us were talking about it. Oh yeah, you must go there. It's so awesome. And there are a lot of mountain bikers there. So we looked at it and we were like, yeah, cool. This is actually a bit of a shortcut and we don't have to take the main road, but we can stay on the little roads through, through the countryside. So yeah, we discussed this in the group and then we said, yeah, let's go, let's do it. And so far, we're very happy we did it. I think it was one of those days with my absolute favorite rides. In front of us was such a cool downhill and at the end of the downhill we could see the blue lake, the Lake Powell. Getting here and jumping into the water for a swim was the greatest reward we could get. I didn't expect such a range of temperatures in this area within a couple of hundred miles. But of course, when you look at the altitudes, Bryce Canyon is located over 6,000 feet elevation. And yes, of course, in May, when it gets chilly, it can snow. When we were riding through the Capitol Reef National Park yesterday and got into Glen Canyon and there was this wild canyon desert-like scenery around, it kind of felt like a second Death Valley. <laughs> but that's what makes part of the trip, you know, you have sand to snow, cold to hot, like rainy to sunny. It just includes everything. You need to be prepared to meet all the conditions. Especially when you're cycling, it's good to do some stabilizing exercises for your body. We are not doing it every day, but sometimes when you have the time. We did some stretching, which is important too because muscles shorten when you use them, also on electric bikes. I think you can feel immediately the purpose of the exercises when you do them. So you feel fresher. Möchte noch jemand irgendeine Übung machen? That was amazing! <laughs> We are 
on the ferry across Lake Powell. We left from the northern side in Bullfrog and crossing over the lake to the southern side because from there we want to continue our route to Monument Valley. at the Monument Valley. We finally made it here after over three and a half thousand kilometers. What is special about Monument Valley is of course the majestic scenery which has been shaped by erosion. It is also the first place of our journey where the Navajo Aboriginal people live. They have their traditions and their spirituality and what is part of their culture is the turquoise jewelry, which is sold here everywhere in little shops that are run by the natives. What I have in my hand here is a sweet grass. The natives use it for the good spirit. And they burn it, and then it smells quite strong. And they use the smoke for a ceremony and they start at the toes up to the head for good luck and for safe travels. It was such a great feeling like to be on bikes and, and ride through the valley, whereas everybody else is, is driving through the valley by car. Again, like everywhere, people were looking at us like in a really friendly way and got excited about, oh wow, here are these guys riding their bikes through the valley, that's kind of cool. Mann, unsere Zelte, direkt vor dieser geilen Kulisse. Nice. Juhu, es gibt Kaffee. After days and days and days of uh, little grocery shops with nothing but onions and potatoes and a few apples that cost one dollar, this is like paradise. paradise. We have been on the road for over six weeks now and cycling almost every day and what we declared as rest days in reality was, were work days at the computer or on the internet and we did not have one day that we just used to relax and, and recover from the physical exercise. I could feel that the team was kind of tired and needed the stay that we spent here in beautiful weather, like 32 degrees Celsius sunshine. Tomorrow we'll move on. Krass, seit sechs Wochen, oder? Das ist das erste Mal, dass irgendwie so halbwegs Viehzeug, also so richtig Viehzeug. Erstmal seit sechs Wochen ein richtig beschissener Sport. <lacht> Magst du es nicht hier? Vom geilsten Sport im beschissensten Sport innerhalb von fünf Stunden.
Lady Pedelec. What's going on here? 4,000 kilometers! Yay! Woo. I think we have something to celebrate. Woo! We have arrived in Moab, a paradise for mountain biking. And um, right now we are at the famous Slick Rock Trail, which is a motocross and a mountain bike trail. And it's one of the very few trails where electric bikes are allowed. There's the main loop that is 12 miles. And it's a pretty rough trail that goes with steep downhills, steep uphills and sharp curves. Good. Yeah. <sighs> das ist so richtig, wie ich es mag, so. Dass man so, so ab und zu mal irgendwie an seine Grenze kommt, mhm. weil das so ein bisschen tricky ist. I saw quite a few mountain bikers that used hardtail mountain bikes, steel frames, kind of the old style mountain bikes. And I found that uh, on a regular bike, you, when you're riding at a much slower pace, um, that seemed to work quite well. But on an electric bike, when you ride a lot faster, um, it was really, really bumpy on, on a hardtail. What's actually the right kind of bike for, the, for this kind of trail uh, would be an all-mountain, um, full suspension mountain bike with uh, good grip on the tires and um, a good suspension. Um, although it's electric, it's still pretty lightweight. And I just fell in love with this bike on this trip. started off relatively small renting mountain bikes and helping people coming to Moab that needed a spare tube or tire and now we're running over a hundred bikes and helping people that even have their own bikes come here and show them the trails and make sure they have a great location. We did this amazing ride over Slick Rock Trail on high bikes, on electric bikes. How did you feel about it? How did you like it? Oh, it was super fun. I've never rode an e-bike so it was, you know, first time for me and I had a great experience. It was, it was a blast. Once I got used to the bike, it, it gave me that confidence and, you know, I, I, for me it would make it so I could do longer rides. I wouldn't really necessarily call that cheating. Yeah. yeah you, you, do, you do get that extra little push though, which is nice. When mountain biking was getting really popular on the west coast, uh, there was a crew of people that came here and started mountain biking. and. Uh -huh. Um, they built the Slick Rock Trail, they painted the lines on the Slick Rock Trail, and as more and more people started riding it, they, they realized it was extremely unique and there was nothing like that anywhere in the world. So I would say that that trail and then other trails like Porcupine Rim have made Moab extremely popular and so people from all over the world want to come here and ride. It's kind of become a mountain bike mecca or destination. We also talked to Rolf who is one of the Poison Spider team. He rides a bike himself that he converted to an electric bike using a Bionics motor. I so believe in electric bicycles, it's unbelievable. You not only have a, a, a wonderful mountain bicycle, you can ride it, use it in town for commuting, you can use it mountain biking, and you came from Seattle, you're in Moab right now. There's hundreds of miles of deserts, I don't know how you did it, so with your mountain bike, and, and you can load it up and tour on it too. I mean, that's fantastic. It's the way of the future. We have to quit, we have to quit using fossil fuels because it is gonna run out 
So we might as well start people now. And I think it's awesome that you guys are doing this trip and getting so many people the chance to look and see what you can do on them and maybe get some wheels turning and maybe get them to, to do what my wife and I did and, and commute. <laughs> I was just sitting on the on the grass over there, like writing some, writing my diary for a little bit, and it seems to be kind of the only place where it's bearable. <laughs> What we see over there um, is the first bit of the Rocky Mountains. Behind that we will get into the real high Rocky Mountains and as you can see there is uh, snow on the top of the peaks already. On the route that we chose there would be two places that go over 9,000 feet. We'll have to find out exactly but as we were told most likely those roads are closed right now. are just for lazy people. I don't think so. This hill isn't that steep, but it's long. Whew. I like it. I didn't say I don't like it. It's just freaking hot. on the bike. <lacht> cooler, Michael. Oh, cooler bisschen, geht's nicht. Noch ein bisschen schiefer in die Kamera so reingucken. Fehlt der Mustache. Die machen keine Geräusche. We are in the Rocky Mountains. We have left Moab three days ago and it was incredibly hot, far over 100 Fahrenheit. Yeah, now you can see the climate has completely changed. The scenery has completely changed. Last year, I drove across the Rocky Mountains um, by car and I'm, I was standing up there and thinking, hmm, compared to the Alps, it's not that special. But this time, like having cycled through the desert and having seen red rocks and sandstone for over a month, I'm like totally excited about being here in the Rocky Mountains, having, having so much green around us and, and the snow-covered peaks. It feels a little bit like home. Day, four riding days are left and um, 
I'm getting goosebumps while saying that. For the rest of the road, we don't want to take the main road, but take uh, smaller side roads. And then um, we'll be doing our high mountain passes to get to the other side of the Rocky Mountains. I am now riding in eco mode because when there's only 10% capacity left in the battery, the system automatically switches down to eco mode. Now the battery is empty. Um, I can still ride, <laughs> no problem, but uh, it takes a lot of energy. So I'm gonna stop right now and change my battery. It feels like I have new wings with a fresh battery. It's fantastic how it how it helps you fly up the hill. Our satellite device tells us that we are at 10,300 feet and we just passed the first snow. The road has become pretty bumpy now and quite wet at times. And yeah, I'm glad as long as it's water and um, not snow. It's considered to be one of the dangerous roads in the Rocky Mountains. So far, we don't really know why, but I'm positive we'll find out. Uh-oh. Road closed. Impossible. Seems like we have to rethink our plans. Um. That sucks. So he said um, there's no way a car can get through there. Um, he said on the bikes we probably could and we probably could hike it, but um, there's still lots of fields of snow, lots of mud, um, and and we had this experience before, like pushing pushing the bikes through the snow and. <laughs> I tell you what, it's a pain in the ass. <laughs> but um, the alternative kind of gets us into real time pressure because um, we want to be in Denver on time and it's a 150 kilometer detour and we still have a couple of hundred kilometers to go after crossing the pass. I'm always up for challenges, so I would go ahead and try it even even knowing that it's gonna be hard uh, let's take a look at the time it's four o'clock now um, we have five hours until it gets dark uh, so yeah the safe way will definitely go back down and go over independence pass and the adventure the real adventure will be this We decided to try to get across Hagerman Pass. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm happy. Andy is so adventurous minded. Um, so we're, we're gonna try our luck. And right now we make sure we have enough water, we have food, we have warm clothes. Checking the satellite device, if it's all the way charged up to make sure we can communicate with, uh, with our support crew. It turned out the road was crossed by a river 
that we had to go through. And exactly that moment, the ranger came back and we started chatting again and he offered to like put the bikes on his truck, drive us through the river and drive us up the hill as long as the road was plowed and as far as he could drive and then he would drop us off and leave us to ourselves. Here's the pass. That's where we gotta go up. See, I got stuck in the snow, knee deep. So, so did my bike. Uh, so what I did right here is uh, walked a trace for for my bike. So um, it won't get stuck and I can't pull it out anymore. Let's try if this works. That whole thing took like two hours <laughs> to get us to a couple of hundred meters. Then we decided uh, to set up the tent right there and um, try again in the, in the morning. Um, as soon as the sun was gone, it was freezing. And then when we woke up the next morning, the snow was, was very hard and good to walk on. And then we started our downhill journey. Habt ihr Bären gesehen? Nein, aber Spuren. up all the way to the top of Loveland Pass and we have now arrived at almost 12,000 feet. This is also one of the places where the Great Continental Divide runs through so we're crossing it right now on our way into Denver. We're almost there, we have one day left. So Susie, what's the day about? Our last riding day. Oh my Golden God. and then into Denver downtown. And I was just thinking about saying goodbye to everyone. That would be so weird. But even now, if I have tears in my eyes now, and it makes me sad to finish that trip. I'm really, really, really happy. We made it to here, everything worked out so well. And it's like, whoa, it's so overwhelming, you know? One thing is for sure, I mean, it has, it has been such a great time and it's been the most wonderful memories. Absolutely. I, um, yeah, I don't want to miss not even a day of the whole trip. So it, is, it has really, really been an experience that I don't, don't even have words for. Angst du auch an?
do is over now. It's over. Cut. No, not yet. No, not no, yet. no. We uh, cycled here in the morning coming from Denver downtown and um, this mall is still Denver but uh, the way we had to cycle was about 20 kilometers and um, we got here and we rode to this event. We met our friends from, from High Bike and from other companies and it was such a warm welcome. Yeah, I felt so proud, like um, arriving here with everybody and having co covered all this distance, having seen all these amazing sceneries. We were invited by the Electric Bike Expo to give a presentation here about, um, about what we have seen about this, this uh, sand to snow trip. And the feedback was, was great. There were a lot of people asking a lot of questions. Yeah, and... Um, one of the greatest moments was when we got our little trophy, the Denver Bear. Um, that was a gift from, uh, from High Bike. So thank you. Thank you to everyone who supported this trip. I feel so grateful and fortunate that I could do this trip together with such a wonderful team. Thank you for this. Thank you.